Hey, Not A K fans. I hope all is well and everyone is having a great week. I'm excited for the release of episode four. I just want to take one minute to just say thank you to our affiliate marketing partners. The first partner we love to thank is Envato. Envato is a powerful DIY design tool that allows anyone to create mock-ups, logos, and any type of design they're looking for in a matter of seconds. The second partner we love to thank is Teachable. Teachable is a platform that allows you to monetize your skills. So if you're looking to find extra income and you have a skill and you want to share it to the world, Teachable is the platform for you. It's similar to Udemy where you can create classes and you can post them and people will sign up and watch these classes and you get monetized for it. The third partner we love to thank is House of Marley. Yes, named after Bob Marley. The House of Marley provides great products when it comes to turntables, ear pods, speakers, well-designed and great quality. Check these products out, guys, and enjoy the episode. External Police Station Morning. Huskins drives up and parks. She gets out of her car and enters the building. Internal, police station hallways. Morning. Richards escorts Jimmy from the jail cells. So you have your court date and remember to dress nicely. Be early. I know, Chief. Ain't my first time. Jimmy exits out the front door. Richards sees Huskins waiting. Thanks for coming. For the record, our company has received absolutely no complaints. Huskins, please. You have to see this to believe it. This way. Internal, police station lab, morning. The lab is a glorified closet, with a few testing kits around on the shelves. The rest of the space is used as storage for paper and other office supplies. A desk has been cleared off and pushed inside the space. Laying on top of it is the monster, still in its straitjacket, tied tightly to the desk. It's not moving. Flint is standing next to it, nightstick in hand. Morning! What is that? We were hoping you would know. This thing has been causing the murders these past few days. I'll get straight to the point. We think your fertilizer is doing this. What? No, th that's impossible. Is it? The monster starts moving. Flint beats it with his nightstick, and Richards unsheaths hers and joins in. They whack the monster until it stops moving again. Huskins stares, mouth open. We've been busy this morning. The fact is, something has turned the corn into a monster, and your stuff came around just a few weeks ago. I don't believe that's coincidental. We've done extensive testing in hundreds of environments. Our product is completely safe when following the recommended usage guidelines. Yeah? And what if someone didn't follow the recommended usage guidelines? What do you want from me? You think my company is staffed by mustache-twirling villains who want to make killer corn? Why? Why would we kill the people we want to sell to? She has a point. Besides, if word gets out about what you're saying, the bad press alone can put us under. Christ, I've got to go manage this. Okay, Huskins, I see your point. Do you have any information that could possibly help? No, I... Huskins' phone rings. She steps away and answers it. Hello? Okay. What? Are you serious? Oh, Lord. Okay, just stay over there and I'll be right over. Bye. She hangs up. Well, I hope you're happy. My delivery truck can't leave. Okay. I told you we had nothing to do with this. Now will you please unblock the road? We didn't put up a roadblock. Richards and Huskins glare at each other. If there's a roadblock we don't know about, we'd better check it out. We can't leave that thing alone. I'll get some interns to keep an eye on it. He ducks out. Richards and Huskins continue to glare. So, are you going to start being honest? You want honesty? Fine. I used to be just like you. Oh? 
stuck in the small town I grew up in until I realized I had to do something with my life. Do something with your life? Corporate? Or do you mean academia? You really think those things are going to help you when you need it? Oh, so I should stick my neck out for other people because they will do the same? How's that going for you? Richards flinches. Flint pokes his head in. Chief? All right, let's go. External, town outskirts, late morning. The road is edged with cornfields on either side, and extending far into the distance, the welcome to Greenfield sign stands off to one side. Richards and Flint pull up in the cop car, park and get out. Ahead of them they see an unmarked delivery truck. Huskins is standing next to it, talking to the driver. Further on the road is blocked by military armored cars. Richards and Flint approach Huskins. What's the situation? We have a shipment that needs to get out. Those soldiers won't move or even talk. Think we'll have better luck? Maybe. The latest high-end pickup truck, without a scratch, pulls up and Cobb gets out. Richards and Flint go to meet him while Huskins remains with a delivery vehicle. Mr. Mayor, long time. Uh, morning. I uh, didn't expect so much company. Care to explain what you did expect? Well, after the other night, I called the state senator, who must have made some other calls. Great. Can we get out? If my meeting goes well, I reckon we will. Another armored car drives up, and the colonel, a female in her 40s, highly decorated with patches and badges, steps out. All of the soldiers around the armored car salute her. She approaches Cobb. Colonel Orville, U.S. Military. Paul Cobb, I presume? The colonel and Cobb shake hands. Oh, Colonel, I wasn't expecting so much fanfare. Unfortunately, this has turned into a matter of national security. I don't believe this. The colonel turns to Richards. And this is? Richards narrows her eyes. Cobb gestures to her. Oh, well, this is Chief Richards and Officer Flint. Um, ma'am, we were wondering if we could have the road cleared. You don't give the orders around here anymore, Chief. No, I'm Flint, and she's the chief. Well, in that case, shut up, Flint. Chief, that's your line. She's taking over. Ma'am, why did you bring all these soldiers? That's classified. We already know about the corn monster. We have it. That's U.S. military property. Wait, you did this? You were making some sort of weapon? I thought the fertilizer caused it. What fertilizer? The one her company makes and distributes? Richards points at Huskins and the delivery truck. Is that so? The colonel snaps and points her finger. Soldiers swarm the truck and remove boxes of fertilizer. Wait! Stop! We'll be confiscating any potential materials of a sensitive nature. Hey, hey, everyone. Just cooperate with anything they need and everything will go back to normal. Thank you, Cobb. I trust we have your full support. Cobb smirks at Richards. First things first, we'll need you to announce that this town is under temporary lockdown. Nobody enters or leaves without our say. Yep, you got it, Colonel. We'll need access to any civilian property with a history of past military activity. Doesn't that violate the Third Amendment? That Richards! And we'll need full access to all police and municipal records. Mm Mm-hmm, yep, understood, Colonel. Including personal relationships. Yes, wait, what? Is there a problem, Cobb? Well, uh, should we really be infringing on our uh, citizens' personal lives? Don't you think that's going a bit overboard? It's necessary for a full investigation. Now wait just a minute. Cobb starts shouting at the colonel. Richards and Flint step away from everyone. So that's it. They're taking care of everything. Problem solved. Do you believe that? No. Richards and Flint return to Huskins, standing helplessly as the truck gets raided. This is turning into a nightmare. Huskins. I don't have time for this. Well, it looks like your workload just got a lot lighter. And since nobody's getting in or out of here, you have as much time as the rest of us. What do you want? As a woman of science, you might be the only one who can help us. With what? We need you to help us figure out anything we can about our monster, before the military covers everything up. If you have any equipment in that warehouse. Huskins looks at the delivery truck, then at the soldiers, then at the cops. She rubs her face. 
Okay, but you owe me for this. Ooh, have you ever been to Silk's nightclub? No, I've never heard of it. We'll get you tickets to the show. Sure, whatever. Richards, Flint, and Huskins get in their cars. Internal, police station lab, late morning. Richards, Flint, and Huskins walk in and see the interns, who look aghast. One of them is poking the corn monster with a stick. We're back! Flint whacks the monster with his nightstick. The interns disperse. Here's what we know. Hitting it makes it fall apart. Then it eventually reforms again. Guns and tasers don't really have an effect. Okay. Any thoughts on how to kill it? Have you tried cutting it into small pieces and separating them? No. We thought about it. What if those pieces each reform into a smaller monster? And each one could grow into one this size. That would be bad. Huskins and Richards look at Flint. Right. We haven't done much experimentation. We've barely had time to keep things under control. Flint whacks the monster again. You know, control. So, you want me to figure out how to kill this thing? And where it came from. And how we can keep it from happening. I will see what I can do. I need a sample. Flint snaps open a pocket knife and hands it to her. She cuts off a piece of the monster. Be careful with that. I will. Oh, there's something else you should take. Richards reaches on the shelf and takes down the coffee cup of the substance they found in Cornelius's field. Coffee? <laughs> I wish. We got this when we were inspecting a dump site in a field. It might be related. What is it? Possibly meth waste. Possibly military weapon fallout. How much you want to bet those soldiers are headed there? Good point. Hoskins takes the coffee cup. Don't drink that. Do you have any more of this? No, but it looks like we'll be going there. Just take it. I'll get the interns back on monster babysitting. Flint exits. Huskins looks at Richards. Why are you doing this? Doing what? A few hours ago you hated me. Now you're giving me everything you have. Well, you were honest with me. They look at each other. Flint pokes his head in. We should go. Yep. Stay safe. You too. They all exit. External cornfield, dead patch, afternoon. Richards and Flint drive up in the cop car. The area is already surrounded by armored cars and soldiers. They park and get out. Well, shucks. I thought this might happen. Think we can get over there? No. Wait, there's Cornelius. Richards waves as Cornelius pulls up in his beat-up pickup truck. He gets out. Thank God you're here. These guys came out of nowhere. Cornelius, we've got some bad news. They've barricaded the whole town. Why? What are they in my field for? That's what we're trying to figure out. That dead patch might have been an old testing site for military stuff. You know, there's over 20,000 acres of agriculture in greater Greenfield County. Why the hell does everything have to happen in my field? Well, if it's any consolation, we're getting closer to finding a responsible party for the killings. Oh yeah. You know who did it? A corn monster. What? Yep. A corn monster? Can you explain? Richards and Flint look at each other, then back at Cornelius. No. Hey, maybe the soldiers can. Is this some kind of joke? They start to approach the dead patch, but are blocked by soldiers. One of them waves the colonel over, and she meets them. She's eating corn off a cob, taken from the field. We meet again. So soon. We're just going to get a sample from that dead patch. This entire area is classified. Move along. Classified from what? We already know this area is a murder crime scene. On top of a chemical dump site. On top of a nuclear weapons test site. On top of an ancient Indian burial ground. The colonel looks down at the cob of corn she's holding and throws it away. The U.S. military is under no obligation whatsoever to local law enforcement. Cornelius steps forward. Now hold on just a minute here. This is my land, and you can't just come in here and take over. I mean, historically... Shut up, Flint. I support the troops. Hell, I'm a vet myself. 
I donate every Memorial Day and I have the bumper stickers to prove it. Wonderful. So we have your cooperation? We what? What are you doing out here? Classified. Christ, Mayor Cobb would never stand for this. Actually, Cornelius, he was the one who called them over. No, there's got to be some mistake. Cornelius shouts at the colonel as Richards and Flint step away. Where is Cobb anyway? Not standing for this. Clearly. He's our best shot at getting anywhere. Oof. I was afraid you would say that. Yep. Speaking of options, if he's not here... And I didn't see his car at Town Hall. And he didn't skip town. He must be having tea with the Queen. Shut up, Flint. Just get in the car. Aw. External. Silver Queen's house. Afternoon. Richards and Flint pull up Silver Queen's driveway and get out of the cop car. They walk to the front door, passing by Cobb's truck. So, you think they'll be okay? What? Cornelius and the others. I mean, we kind of just left them. They're grown-ups. They'll be fine. (laughs) Wow. Okay. As they approach the door, they hear loud music blasting from inside. Richards knocks. No way they're gonna hear that. Richards tries the doorknob and it opens. They look at each other. Um, maybe we should come back later. And deal with the colonel instead? Never mind. They enter. Internal. Silver Queen's house. Afternoon. Richards steps through the doorway, Flint following close behind. Gary? Richards is barely audible over the music. They look around and follow the music to the bedroom. The door is closed. They look at each other. Richards opens the door. Inside, they see Cobb and Silver Queen in bed together. Cobb looks at Flint and Richards, screams and covers himself with a blanket. Silver Queen slowly and with a smile reaches over to the bedside table and shuts off the music. What a surprise. Actually, not really. Cobb drops the exaggerated southern accent as he speaks and settles into his natural twang. You two... Didn't see anything. You know, sodomy is technically illegal in Greenfield County. No, please. Silver Queen gets out of bed and covers up with a silk robe. Hush, those laws aren't really enforceable. Tell that to the Supreme Court. Will you come with us, Mayor Cobb? Oh, uh, what do you want? Silver Queen leaves the room. Flint follows. Those soldiers are all over Cornelius's field. And what do you want me to do about it? You were the one that called them over. Take control. But I... I didn't... Do your job, Cobb. Cobb picks his pants up off the floor, puts them on, and gets out of bed. Oh, what do I look like, a sergeant? Colonel outranks sergeant. Whatever. I tried talking to them. You'd have better luck. No, you're the leader here. The well-being of the town depends on you. Cobb sighs. Oh, it's pointless. I didn't get anywhere this morning. When are you going to quit being such a coward, Cobb? Cobb flinches. Silver Queen enters with a tea tray. Teapot, teacups, crumpets. Flint enters after, mouthful of crumpet. You can't just lay around here having tea and crumpets. Yeah, but they're good crumpets. What do you want me to do? Get some clothes on, and at least talk to Cornelius. Darling. I'll provide moral support if you need it. No, we can't. She's right, you know. It's cowardly to keep us a secret. Cobb nods. Fine. Cobb puts on his shirt. Flint hands Richard a crumpet. She hesitates, then takes it and eats it. Ugh, they are good crumpets. External, cornfield, dead patch, evening. The police car and Cobb's truck pull up to the cornfield and park. Richards and Flint get out of the cop car while Cobb and Silver Queen jump out of Cobb's truck. The cornfield is still surrounded by soldiers. All right, where's Cornelius? Maybe we shouldn't have just left him with the colonel. It's getting dark. Is that a problem? Silver Queen and Richards look at each other. Cornelius jogs to them, away from the soldiers. Officers, I was wondering where you went. He approaches and shakes Cobb's hand. You've come to help, Mr. Mayor? Aye. He clears his throat. He uses his natural voice. Yes. Cornelius turns to Silver Queen and narrows his eyes. Silver Queen stares back. 
And what's this thing here for? This is my, uh, support. Silver Queen looks at Cobb. Richards asks the soldiers to get the colonel, but they wave her away. The group looks to Cobb. He takes a deep breath. Gentlemen, I'm Mayor Cobb. I need to speak with the colonel. The colonel comes over. Back again? Cobb looks back at the others, who nod and smile at him. He turns to the colonel and clears his throat. On behalf of the city of Greenfield and its citizenry, I, Mayor Paul Cobb, order you off the private property of Cornelius Keller. The colonel stares at him. Are you done? Well, folks, I tried. Mayor Cobb... I'm sorry, Cornelius. Richard steps forward. The sun sinks below the horizon. Cornelius goes to his truck. Colonel Orville... The people of this town deserve communication about your intentions. I'm not at liberty to discuss confidential matters. But why is it so confidential? Are you creating... A rustling sound comes from the cornstalks. Any unauthorized information can compromise our activities, which are critical to national security. Silver Queen timidly steps forward. Then you'll be keeping us safe? From what? So-called corn monster you have locked up? Gary, is there something else you're not telling us? Well, there are a few nights I thought I saw... A gunshot sound. Everyone turns to look at Cornelius, pointing his smoking shotgun in the air. He lowers it and reloads. Enough of this. Now everyone listen to me. If... A corn monster runs out of the cornfield, straight towards Cornelius... Richards points her gun towards it as Flint grabs his nightstick. Cornelius, get down! Is that the monster? Cornelius turns at the monster, grabs him and pushes him down. The shotgun slips from his hands. Flint rushes forward and beats the monster with his nightstick. Did it escape? Damn interns, what do we pay them for? We don't pay them, Flint. Richards rushes to Cornelius and grabs his hand to help him up. And now the monster reaches out of the field and grabs Cornelius' leg. It wrenches him from Richard's grasp and drags him in. No! She runs into the field after him. Wait, Chief! He turns to the Colonel. Help her! We don't know how many are in there. Hold position! Two more monsters emerge from the field. One runs towards Cobb. Silver Queen grabs his hand and runs with him to his car. They shut themselves in. Cobb in the driver's seat. The monster slams into the side of the vehicle, jostling it. The other monster runs towards Flint. He raises his nightstick and braces, but the monster he was hitting grabs his legs and pulls him down. Ah! A soldier aims his weapon at the monster running toward Flint. Lower your weapon! Wait for my order! Cobb drives his car to the monster running at Flint and knocks it down. Flint grabs Cornelius' shotgun and hits the monster, grabbing him with it. Richards runs out of the field, followed by Cornelius and three more monsters. There's too many! We've got to get out of here! I ain't going anywhere! Cornelius runs to his truck bed and grabs another shotgun. He aims it at the monsters chasing Richards and fires twice. Two of the monsters get partially shredded. Richards runs to the cop car and gets in. At the sound of the gunfire, the monsters turn and run towards Cornelius. Silver Queen jumps out of Cobb's car and grabs the shotgun out of Flint's hand. Gary, no! Flint crawls into the passenger seat of Cobb's car and shuts the door. Silver Queen aims at the monsters, approaching Cornelius and fires, hitting one in the head. It falls. Get back in the car, Gary! Not now. We've lost too many good men. Silver Queen runs towards Cornelius. Richards pulls the cop car in Silver Queen's path, knocking down two monsters. She rolls down the windows. Let's regroup at the station. Cornelius will meet you there. Gary, get in. Silver Queen climbs over the hood of the cop car and keeps running to Cornelius. Cornelius jumps in the driver's seat of his truck and shuts the door. Four monsters slam into the side of the truck, tipping it on its side. No! Richards circles the tipped truck, whooping the cop car siren. The monsters turn and chase the cop car. She pulls the car away from the field towards the main road. Silver Queen climbs on the tip truck, opens the door, and pulls Cornelius out. Cobb pulls up near them, and they both get into Cobb's truck bed. 
cop pulls the car onto the main road. Cornelius looks back and sees more monsters rushing out of the fields toward the soldiers. They scatter and begin jumping inside nearby armored cars. External, Greenfield, Back Roads, Night. Cobb steadily accelerates as they enter onto dark roads surrounded by cornfields. Flint leans out the window and looks back. How you doing back there? Silver Queen and Cornelius grip the sides of the truck bed. Don't go over any bumps! Flint pulls his head in. Cornelius looks over at Silver Queen. Where'd you learn to shoot like that? 144th Infantry Regiment, 3rd Battalion, Company B. No kidding. I was in Company A. Didn't recognize a fellow soldier. You don't know me at all. Cornelius looks down and falls silent. Silver Queen holds out their hand. Gary. Cornelius hesitates, then shakes hands. Cornelius. Thank you for saving me. Flint sticks his head back out the window. We're catching up. Get ready. Cornelius reaches into his pocket and hands Silver Queen more shotgun ammunition. External. Greenfield. Back roads. Night. Richards drives the cop car on the country roads. Close behind a group of corn monsters chases. Cobb's truck starts approaching the horde as more monsters jump out of the field and on top of the cop car. Cornelius and Silver Queen each put a foot on the wheel well and aim their weapons around the side and top of the vehicle. As soon as we shoot, they're coming after us. Let's pop this corn. They fire. A monster falls off the roof of the cop car. Another monster from the horde falls under the wheel of Cobb's car. The vehicle bumps, making Cornelius and Silver Queens fall in the truck bed. Monsters begin hanging on the edges of the truck bed and grabbing at Cornelius and Silver Queen. Flint leans out the window, reaches back and shoots at the monster, grabbing Silver Queen who pounds it with a shotgun butt. Ahead, Richards whoops the siren and veers sharply onto an unmarked dirt road. Damn it, Chief! Don't call them back! Whoa! Cobb slams on the brakes as a huge horde of monsters appears in the headlights, forming a wall. Follow her! Better we stick together! They turn and follow onto the dirt road. Cornelius grabs the monster off Silver Queen and pushes it off the truck bed. Its body is trampled by the pursuing horde. External, Jimmy's trailer, night. They come to a clearing with rundown mobile homes surrounded by garbage. A few addicts who were lying about in rusty folding chairs jump up. Jimmy points. Damn, the fuzz. Hide everything. I can't afford bail again. Richards puts her arm out the window and motions for Cobb to go ahead of her. Silver Queen reaches out of the truck bed and fist bumps Jimmy as they drive past. Richards pulls over near the trailers and waves over Jimmy. Jimmy, you guys aren't safe here. Jump in or get your own rides now. Wait, what goes on, Chief? That. She motions behind her and the horde appears out of the field. Get moving! Don't worry, Chief, I got you. I'm doing my community service in advance. Jimmy turns to the other addicts. Get your bikes, gang. We're making cornmeal. No, it's too dangerous! Cobb honks his horn and Richards moves the police car to meet him. The addicts grab their motorcycles, assorted guns, and improvised clubs, rev their engines, and drive straight to the monsters. The horde begins to dissipate. Richards pulls up alongside Cobb. Flint jumps out of Cobb's truck. I'm joining up with Richards. Keep your phone on, Cobb. He runs to the cop car and gets in the passenger seat. Flint and Richards clasp hands. Cobb leans out the truck window and calls to Cornelius and Silver Queen. You want a seat? Grab it now. They both ignore him. While watching the addicts skillfully attack monsters and dodge blows, they aim and fire their weapons. They talk between shotgun blasts. But why all the makeup? You can be a tough and strong man. I'm tough when I have to be. But isn't beauty better than fighting? That's all I want my life to be. Cobb turns and calls to Richards. Uh, what now, Chief? These two are having a moment back here. Stick to the plan. Back to the station. Is there another way out of here? They look toward the chaos, and a few monsters break away and run toward them. I don't know, but I'm about to make one. He hits the gas and plunges into the cornfield, flattening the stalks. Richard follows closely behind. Monsters emerge from the fields and pull themselves into the truck bed. Silver Queen and Cornelius beat them back with their guns' butts.
external, warehouse, night. The truck bursts out of the cornfield onto some railroad tracks, with the cop car following close behind. The truck drives toward the warehouses. Monsters follow close behind and keep climbing onto the truck. There's too many of them. Little help here? In the parking lot near the warehouses, there's a flickering light. Flint talks on his cell, and his voice is audible through Bluetooth in Cobb's truck. Cobb, what's that light? Don't know. The road's that way. He pulls into the parking lot. In the truck's headlights, Huskins appears, shielding her eyes. She's holding a fertilizer jug, and next to it is a lit torch, flame flickering. Flint leans out the window. Huskins, get inside! Hang on. I'm about to try science. She aims her fertilizer sprayer. She sprays through the torch, which causes a fireball to be launched at the pursuing horde of monsters. Inflamed, they scatter. Silver Queen pumps their fists in the air. (laughs) Ha ha, woo! The truck keeps going and heads towards the main road. Richards follows behind and waves out the window. We owe you one! Huskins waves as the two vehicles hit the road. External, Greenfield back roads, night. With the truck leading and the cop car behind, they speed past fields of corn stalks. On the phone, Flint speaks in a low voice. Careful. This is where Chief and I found that first one. We need to be quiet. I'll tell the others. Flint leans out the cop car window and motions to Silver Queen and Cornelius in the truck bed. Okay. Keep quiet. But... What? Shh! One unusually large monster runs from the field and rushes the truck. It grabs Cornelius and pulls him out of the truck bed. (gasps) No! Silver Queen hits the back window of the truck with their hands. Stop the truck! Stop the truck! Silver Queen leaps out and runs towards the monster holding Cornelius. Cobb and Richards skid to the stop and Flint jumps out with his nightstick. The large monster uproots a cornstalk and stabs it into Cornelius' back. Ah! Silver Queen shoots the monster that speared Cornelius, partially shredding it then picks Cornelius up off the ground. Flint hits the monster with his nightstick as Silver Queen pulls Cornelius' limp body back into the truck bed. Flint uses his flashlight to signal to Richards. She hits the gas and flattens the larger monster. Flint jumps back in the cop car and grabs his cell phone. Hit it! Cobb accelerates. Richards follows. Cobb looks in the rearview mirror and sees the large corn monster stand up but disappear into the distance. In the truck bed, Cobb sees Silver Queen holding Cornelius. What happened? Hurry, he's in a bad way. Hang on, guys, we're almost there. They pull into the downtown streets. External police station night. Cobb's truck pulls into the parking lot of the police station, followed closely behind by Richards in the cop car. The truck is now scratched and dented, with shredded corn stalks sticking out of the grill. Richards jumps out and runs to the truck. Flint and Cobb jump out also, and all of them take a look inside the truck bed. Illuminated by the parking lot lights, Silver Queen is cradling Cornelius. Cornelius is still impaled with the uprooted cornstalk. His breathing is ragged. Richards points Flint towards the police station and he runs inside. Cornelius, hang on, we're getting help. Uh, it's too late for me. Tears roll down Silver Queen's face. I'm sorry. I I tried to save you. You did. It was a blast. Fighting with you. Don't leave me too. Stop crying. It's not manly. I'm not a man. No. You're perfect. As you are. Cornelius dies. Silver Queen weeps. (sighs) Cobb goes to Silver Queen and embraces them. There, there. It wasn't your fault. Actually, had Gary told us there were more of those things out there, we never would have stayed out past dark. Damn it, Chief. This isn't the time to rub it in. Gary, we need you to be completely honest with us. Always. Promise? Yes, Chief. The armored car pulls in, a few monsters still clinging to the vehicle's sides. The soldiers jump out and pulverize them with their weapons. The colonel jumps out of one of the armored cars and Richards runs up to her. What are you doing here? We had to retreat. Need some place to bunker the rest of the night. Heard you say you were regrouping here. Why should we help you? This is a matter of national security. What security? Cornelius is dead and you did nothing. 
war? Are you really responsible? Excuse me? What are these things anyway? Experimental military creations? As I said about a thousand times, this is classified. And what good is that going to do? This has become a war zone, and like it or not, we're all soldiers. Whose side are you on anyway? The Colonel stays silent. Flint in the distance calls Sir Richards. The mayor will be doing a town meeting tomorrow. If you want the trust of this town, you'd better have something worthwhile to say. Richards returns to Flint. The Colonel watches them go in the station and turns back to her soldiers. <laughs> 